Hello, everybody. It's Monday. Good to be here. I am glad you're joining us. Hello, Kathy. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Hello, Terry. From sunny Indiana. It's sunny here today, too. It's beautiful. Beautiful weather today. Hello, Rhonda. Chance is here as well. He's helping me, as usual. Of course. Um, sorry, just making a note. Um... All right, hang on. I got. I'll be right with you. Uh, okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Patricia. Hello, Connie. Good to see you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Monday. It's Monday. Chance is here with us. Aren't you? Are you going to be a good boy today? Are you going to drive me crazy today? Hello, Christine. Thank you so much for the, the uh, beautiful butterfly card. I showed it in the last stream. Hello, Evelyn. Ah. Hello, hello to anybody I missed. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. So yeah, it's Monday. I missed Friday because I was gone. I was out of town. The card was beautiful. I immediately cut the butterfly off the envelope. It went in my journal. The card is in my journal. I appreciate it. It was beautiful. And your message. Yes. So, Mr. Chance is not going to miss his opportunity to be a part of the stream tonight. Indeed. Do you mind if I drink my tea? I really have to watch him because he will come up under my cup and headbutt the bottom of the cup. Or he'll headbutt my arm. Because he's just like that. He's such a sweet boy. He really is a sweet boy. He just, he missed his mama. He missed his mama because she was gone a few days and he had to go hang out at the vet. And um, it's so funny. He's been there enough the last two years off and on that when I take him, of course, he sings the song of his people all the way from my house to the vet, which the vet's very close, where they board occasionally. If I can have somebody stay here with them, I usually do. But um, sometimes it just doesn't work out. And this was one of those where it just didn't work. And so I took him to the vet. <laughs> he sings the song of his people all the way over there. And when I bring him, open the door and take him in, whoever's behind the desk, he's been there enough times now, or they go, oh, Chance is back. It's like, well, how could you tell? <laughs> he does. Hello, Vale. Hello, Peggy. Who else? Anybody else I missed? Hi, Linda. Hope you're doing well. Say hello to Tim for me, please. I hope he's doing well. Is he still making good progress? I haven't caught up with him for a while or caught up with you. I know I see your comments in the under the videos every once in a while. <clears throat> he is such a mess, this kitty. But they love having him at the vet. It's so funny. It's so funny. They uh Yeah. They love having him there. They say, although I think he probably drives them crazy. One of the things they do right away is they get him out of his little carrier and uh, somebody will carry him around. 
I, I think personally, I think that's to hush him up. I think that's what that's about. But I could be wrong. He is just a crazy thing. I know. Mo, I didn't. <clears throat> I would um, like to see, I'd like to say that um, that was original. The Song of His People is original with me. It's not. It's original with, uh, the first time I heard it was from one of my friends who had Siamese cats for years. And, and then after I got Charlie and Chance, and she was so excited that I had Siamese cats, you know, and I wasn't at all sure that I was going to be able to keep them because... I thought I was highly allergic to their dander, and either I got used to it or I don't know. Anyway, um, she got regular cats, <laughs> so we had literally kind of switched. She's got one that's part Siamese, but um, yeah, they like to sing the song of their people too. Her cats do, but he is he's extraordinarily good, extraordinarily good at it. That's true. Right, Rhonda. Right. <laughs> um, Muppet is, she's not too excited about going to the vet. She gets pretty stressy anymore. I don't think that any dog likes to go to the vet. But, and the, the best part for her is that she doesn't hear much at all. And so now, because she doesn't hear, you know, the other dogs barking and being all anxious doesn't bother her too much but she's you know she just gets um she gets anxious just because it's not home you know she's really showing signs of age i'm trying to prepare myself for the eventuality but whoo it's warm in here uh yeah I, you never are prepared for that right Um, he is affectionate and he's obnoxious and he's wonderful and he's annoying. He's like a tick right now. Um, he just is totally attached to me. Aren't you? Yes. He's just totally attached to me. <laughs> uh, he did. He definitely did. Got very attached after Charlie left. Yeah. He was, Chance was the younger of the two. He was a year younger than Charlie. And although they weren't actually physically related to each other, um, they were definitely brothers. Definitely brothers by, um, <clears throat> by choice. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> he spent all this one spent all of his time he would wear Charlie out Charlie would find new places to lie down just to try to shake Chance and um, uh, it would be nice if you didn't rub your face on my artwork okay <laughs> so Charlie would find he would continually f move around the house to find new places to lie down and Chance would find him lay down and just snuggle into his belly he just he was always attached to charlie so i wasn't sure what would happen once we lost charlie and uh he's actually he's done a lot better than i thought he would hello angela how are you hi jenny good to see you jenny you're in australia right are you in australia or new zealand i've forgotten which one or the other, right? No. All right. I think before <clears throat> before I get going here, I'm going to put Chance, just going to put him in the other room because you are already started talking at the age of 10. Wow. You have a beautiful cat, Vale. She puts pictures of of um, her cat on Instagram. All right, you ready to go in the other room? Shall we? All right, yeah, come on. <coughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. evening. Okay. 
So let's see. Um, last time we were together, I was working on some mandalas, some small mandalas for a project. I know, he always sounds Western Australian. Okay. <clears throat> he always sounds like he's saying no. No. <laughs> yes, do and bow when you pass it on to the queen, Vale. Bow. <laughs> he has sphinxes. Uh, wow, you have some, you have, you have a lot. Jenny, you have a lot. <laughs> three, two sphinxes and three rag dolls. Yes. Okay, so last time I was here, and I know I have been sporadic in being here, which means that it's hard for people to know my schedule. I don't know my schedule sometimes. <clears throat> um... But I'm here every time I can be here. How about that? What I was doing the last time I was with you all was working on prepping for a project that I'm going to be doing. And so I was using some watercolor paper and and then I had made some backgrounds. So I already had the backgrounds done. They were sitting around in different colors and sort of circular type designs because I have a mandala project. Oh, that's nice, Angela. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I did these. These were prepared ahead of time. And then what we did on the stream was just using what was there and turn and penciling in some forms, mandala style forms, doodle type forms, based on what the the paint said, you know, what it gave me. And so that's what I've done here. I've just and these are four inch by four inch squares. So this is for a bigger project. So it went from these, okay, to this, and then I don't have any that are just inked, but the next stage after this <clears throat> was I inked them. And then after I inked them, then I went back in and added more color, more shading color. And so that's what I've done with these. So I'll just show you these real quickly. I think this was one that we inked. I inked with you guys. And then I went back in and added more color just to give it more depth, just to emphasize some of the different colors. But I'm using whatever the design was that, that just serendipitously happened, you know, to create the, the embellishment. I do too, Vale. They are, it is, you're exactly correct. And um, some of these all go back, like this one got pretty cloudy in here once I added the, the extra color on. So I'll go back and probably re-emphasize some of that. And I'll go back in and add some more doodles with pen. This one doesn't need much as far as adding more pen colors with jelly roll pens and that sort of thing, or paint pens and that kind of thing. But you kind of get the idea. So I just thought I would show you where I was with that at this point. So I'm just carrying these around with me and I have them, I'm using, adding color using Inktense blocks and a water brush and um, so I'm just putting those 
putting them together and then that way I have the whole kit and caboodle ready to go with me when I have a minute and I have everything uh, in a zipper bag so I have everything in this zipper bag this is one of the these are this was a class on the website at howtogetcreative.com so I can just if I want to take only this one pouch that has the, the pens and all the stuff has all the things and this is made this is made from a placemat okay so that is that so I'm moving on to another project at the moment and so I thought, oh, and by the way, happy Eclipse Day, since it is Eclipse Day. Did you all watch the eclipse or participate in it? Let me know if you did. Um, I noticed that it got dark. <laughs> I noticed it got dark. And, um, or was getting darker. We didn't have a total eclipse here. We did... I don't know, in 21, I guess, or 19. I don't know when it was. It was one of those. It might have been 19. It must have been 19. If it was 21, I would have totally missed it. Um, anyway, it, it got, you know, it got dark-ish, but we didn't lose all the light or anything. So I sort of went, oh, okay, good enough. Anyway, happy Eclipse Day, depending on where you are. Um, yeah, it's on, um, it's a whole class thing. There's several different styles, all done with placemats on the website. So it's a whole thing. Um, so anyway, all right, let's do this. So what I'm doing and moving on to a different project, and I'll tell you why I'm doing this later as I start working on this a little bit more but right now I'm just working on drawing this and this I was going to do a background or I was going to do the drawing and then ink it and then paint the background you know all stuff and I happened to find these as I was looking for paper and although the entire paper is not painted um, it's like oh no that the, the backgrounds already done <laughs> Oh, cool. That's that's cool, Vale. It was pouring down rain here in Houston, so you didn't see much. Yep, really. For real. You wouldn't see much with it pouring down rain. Uh, sometimes, you know, it gets it's cloudy when we've had... I remember one time it was cloudy, and it's like, well, that took care of that. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> it's hard to tell if it's an eclipse, if it's, um, if it's cloudy. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so I just decided to work on something I already had. And this was left from a different project where this was a secondary print where I had painted the paper, as I recall, painted the paper background and then used this and picked up the excess paint, I think is what I did. And so here's another one different colorway and you can see the similar kind of thing so when the work is already done why not take advantage of it so that's what I did so we're gonna work on this one and we'll see what we get done on it but um, and I will explain to you why I chose this particular design as we go through but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep working on it and this is acrylic in the background I'm pretty sure Because if it was watercolor, it would lift. Usually it will lift with the um, eraser, and it's not lifting. So, yeah, that's why it makes me think. It is not watercolor. It is acrylic. So I'm going to um, continue this, and I'll fill in this part of it. And I looked up some different designs online that were 60s inspired designs and so that's where a lot of my 
inspiration has come from and color the color palette that I'll be using and so forth and so that's what you know when in doubt look it up look online you know don't cop I, you don't need to copy anything and even if you did try to copy it it's not going to look the same uh, so I just used some of the different elements of these and just started working from that so that's what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do that. And also, I <clears throat> another thing I did was I bought these pencils today. I actually picked them up at the grocery store. And these are Crazy Art Swirled Color Pencils. I, truly, I don't like these kinds of pencils. And I think I've had these, not this brand, but another brand. And they may still be over in my pencil case. Uh, but of course I didn't have them with me and these were cheap so I bought them at the grocery store today but really what I bought them for were the designs <laughs> I bought them for the designs on on the pencils on the wood and for the color palette that's what I bought them for I really don't much care for these swirly leads this is more attractive to kids than it is to adults for the most part, they're hard. I find them hard to control. You know, you gotta, if you're very strategic, you can get some of the different colors out of the, the pencil core. See that there's different colors in there. They're literally swirled in there. You know, but they're just, they're not, I think they're very hard to control personally. But I got them because I wanted the designs on the outside for inspiration and the colors of what they were. So it worked. Kind of psychedelic-ish colors. Yeah, some a lot of parents took their kids out of school and some states had no school. I know, isn't that interesting? You have some of those. Yeah, they're just they're just interesting, aren't they, Vale? I I don't know. I keep wanting to like them. You know, it's that way about some things where it's like, I'm going to learn to like these. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, probably not. Uh, I don't, didn't like them then. I may not like them now. Anyway, so I'm just working on this drawing. And I was playing with how I wanted to, to make the design. Um, do I? This is gel pen and this is... Un, the uniball or the Posca pen in the smallest tip that I have which is the PC 1MR so that's this one it's a bolder blacker line and this is a Jelly Roll uh, 06 a new one because Jelly Roll pens do have a shelf life and they do give up the ghost at some point anyway so I'm just drawing this because I was inspired by a um, production that we went to over the weekend which was we did several we packed a lot into the weekend uh, we left here late trying to think Thursday night and we shall see if I'm going to be able to do this and talk at the same time because a lot of times <laughs> is exceedingly challenging for me to talk and draw we'll give it a shot okay so we went to Las Vegas we left late Thursday night I was not feeling good on Thursday I felt pretty rotten I felt pretty rugged for um, couple of days as is I'm sure evidenced by the fever blister that you may observe on my face oh yes once I got back from the Australia New Zealand trip it's it's been a minute it's been a minute trying to get myself back together again and I'm I'm getting there I'm getting there but it's it's been a minute and so I kind of, you know, I'm, I've burned the candle 
at both ends. And because of that, my body finally said, you know, if you don't knock it off, you're going to be, you're going to feel even worse. <laughs> so instead, it just decided to make me sick. And so anyway, we left. I didn't know if I was going to be able to make the trip, but I finally thought, I think I can do it. I started feeling better and better throughout Thursday. And so then we took off and uh, flew out late Thursday night to Las Vegas, which is where the Studley Duck's son lives. And... Um, his daughter-in-law works for a nonprofit called Olive Crest, and it is, I encourage you to look it up, it's olivecrest.org. I do believe in their mission a lot. I really appreciate their mission and what they do, and their slogan or byline or whatever you want to call it mantra um, is strong families safe kids and they are they are an organization it's a nonprofit so they work strictly on donations and what they do is they work as a go between um, helping families in crisis or helping kids in crisis. Sometimes it's high school kids that they're working with, you know, that don't have a family, or, um, you know, they've been ousted from a family situation for whatever reason. Remember, there was one situation where there was a, um, the mother a young man the mother had died she had remarried or she had married but it wasn't the father of the this young man who was in high school and um, I don't remember all the details but anyway um, the mother died and I don't remember why I don't know what happened but anyway she passed away and then the husband not I guess kind of a stepfather but obviously not a very good one booted the the um, kid out of the house now there may have been reasons for that I really don't know but anyway so you know the Olive Crest stepped in and helped him with resources and so forth and they do that they do that in lots of, of situations and um, I believe in their mission. So I personally do help support them. And so I would <coughs> encourage any of you who um, are looking for good places to um, lend support take a look at olivecrest.org okay so that's what we went for they have <clears throat> they have a luncheon fundraiser once a, once a year and this was it hello Dorothy it really is it really is um, I personally have listened to a couple of people last year when we were there um, for the fundraiser. I got to hear a mother talk about how Olive Crest had stepped in and helped her when she had twins. And her twins, one of the twins she knew was not well. And she couldn't get anybody to listen to her. And that was not good because she kept, she had that instinct um, that, you know, things were not, <clears throat> were not okay with this one of the twins. He was not growing like the 
like his brother and um it was a whole long story and i mean she kept take going to the hospital and she had another child also and she was going to the hospital and they weren't listening to her and they were threatening to call the police and she just absolutely said she was going if they wanted to take her to the hospital that was or take her to jail that was fine but she wasn't going any place until they examined her baby they finally called in somebody else to um, a pediatrician of some kind to examine this child and in fact he had some sort of I think I don't know what the problem was it seemed like it was something with his heart and it required emergency surgery and Olive Crest stepped in and provided temporary home a temporary shelter for um, the other twin and you know it was I mean they were a godsend to this young mother and they're non-judgmental about you know there are situations that people find themselves in and sometimes you go you know what in the world why why would you let yourself get in this situation but you know that's kind of like doesn't really matter because you have families in crisis and if somebody doesn't step in then the state is going to be stepping in and the state system is not in good shape and so they try to fill the gap and they they really do a good job they really do a good job and their whole goal is to be supportive and to get people back on their feet and kind of be that stop gap um, during that you know during the, the time anyway okay that's right Rhonda don't mess with a mother's intuition you are so right okay so um, okay so that's what I was working on is this design up here I can always adjust it like I need a little more up here in this corner what I'm gonna do with this is once I have it finished my intention is to make cards with this uh, probably what I will do is scan it in my computer and save it and uh, then I'll at least have the the artwork before I put the color on and then I'll you know uh, I'm a big believer in do it once, <laughs> put the time in once, and then um, and then reuse what you have. And so that's a way you can do that is to scan it into the computer and save it, and then it can be tweaked and stuff like that. And then I can use it in different configurations. So that's my thought. We'll see. We'll see if I remember to do that. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so let's fill this corner up here. Um, I'm going to just do like this. So anyway, that was the luncheon on Friday. We went to that. And then Friday night, I mean, I, I was just hoping that my energy would hold out. And it did. I'm very grateful that it did. And so Friday night... Well, that looked terrible. Let's try that again. There's a reason you do it in pencil, because when it looks terrible, you have a you have a saving grace. <laughs> Friday night we went to. You guys are gonna love this story. I'm gonna tell you. So, listen up. We went to the Mirage hotel okay now let, before I go any further let me dispel any rumors okay hello Ann um, um, that this branch is in Las Vegas but they're headquartered in California they're headquartered in California and it's O L I V E C R E S T and if you look up olivecrest.org, 
they tell you, they show you, I think there's three states that they are in, California, Nevada, and another one, but I can't remember which one right offhand. How's Anne tonight? It's good to see you. Thanks for being here, everybody. So you guys are going to love the story. Okay, so we go to the Mirage Hotel. Oh, I was going to tell you, to dispel any rumors, we did not get married in Las Vegas at the Elvis Wedding Chapel. Okay, uh, and just in case anybody's thinking that that's what happened, that I'm going to, you know, someday I probably will tell you that we did get married, but um, that we had a ceremony, but we did not. Okay, we did not go to the Elvis Wedding Chapel. Um, we've had people ask us that. And it's like, no, no, we didn't. <laughs> okay, all right. We went purely for the the fundraiser and then for the evening activities. All right, so let's see. What am I going to do next here? I need to do something a little bit... I think I'm going to tag team off of this and make a paisley of some sort coming this way, I think. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. All right, that's not too bad. So anyway, we went to the Mirage Hotel where we had reservations for dinner at a steakhouse that was very nice the food was really good you know there are some places you go and the food is the food's good but it's not memorable you know you're like yeah that was good but you know the next in a week you don't remember what you ate there this steakhouse was good enough that I will remember the food there. <laughs> it was really good. It was really good. I know, Anne. Isn't that the truth? Well, I told, didn't I tell you guys the story of of um, my friend that had cerebral palsy? <laughs> did I tell you that story? This was years ago. Remind me to circle back to this, the Mirage Hotel. And the reason I'm doing this, <laughs> my friend Lucy, she has since passed away. She had um, breast cancer years years back that took her life. She had cerebral palsy, and she and I became very good friends because I had a retail store, and she came to call on me because the business that she worked for, she was wheelchair bound, um, could not walk. She could stand but she couldn't walk and um, she had a the cerebral palsy affected her speech affected a lot of her movements of her hands but she could type like nobody's business she typed with two fingers like this she had um, she could do like this but she didn't have much and she could raise her arms but she didn't have a lot of of other movements that she was able to make anyway she and I got to be fast friends and I got to where I could understand her just fine. It took us a, it took us a while, but she was real patient at listening, you know, repeating things till I got her speech pattern and stuff. <clears throat> she had been married, her husband had died. He had um muscular dystrophy. And people don't generally have die from uh cerebral palsy because that is not a fatal situation, but there's often other situations that come because you're compromised in some way, but the muscular dystrophy is a different situation. It is usually fatal, or usually, it usually shortens a person's life, and in his case, it certainly did. He, he, was, he didn't last more than 30, I think he lived to be 36, but they had said he wouldn't live to eight, be 18, so... Anyway, it has nothing to do with this. Anyway, so I met her not long after he had passed away. And so I had said to her, well, would you like to go to church with us? And she was like, oh, yes, yeah, she would like that. She was Catholic, and we went to a Protestant church, but she really wanted to go to church. And so we were taking her to church. I know I'll shorten this because I know I've told this a million times. 
And um, so um, I would, we would drive, Clausman and I would drive to her apartment. She had a van, a handicap equipped van. Then I would load her up in the van and then take her, drive her van to church. And our church was, had an entrance that was handicap accessible. And so it worked out just fine. And then afterwards, oftentimes, this, and we do that Sunday nights most of the time. And then afterwards, a lot of times we would go to a restaurant with another couple friends of ours and we'd have dinner together and then I'd take her home then I'd go home kind of thing. Anyway, so, um, you know how people get screwed up in their, um, as Ann said, how they jump to, how they think and come to erroneous conclusions. So we had a Bible study at our house, this one uh, for some younger couples and one evening this one couple was the only couple that was going to be able to be there and so i just said well why don't you just come out and we'll just have dinner because nobody else could come and that was you know that was fine and she the wife of this couple mentioned to somebody else in the church at the time this is years and years and years ago mentioned to her that she was coming to our house for dinner they were coming to spend the evening with us and have dinner and this other person who I didn't even know her, really. I mean, I rec I knew her because I'd seen her, but that was it. And she says to, to my friend, this is not Lucy, this is somebody else, said, I can't believe that you associate with them. And so the, this young woman is telling me this, okay? And I'm, I looked at her and my eyelids flew open and I said, what? And she said, yeah, she said, now I'm not going to tell you who it is. And I said, okay. Um, she said, she went on to explain to me that I had a sister um, who was in a car accident. That's true. That part's true. The part she missed was that my sister was killed in the car accident. This was years and years and years, years and years ago. This girl had missed that part of the story. And she said, well, you know, that girl that comes with them in the wheelchair, that's her sister, my sister. And after that car accident, she's in a wheelchair. So obviously this is not a well-educated person because there was nothing about Lucy that would indicate a car accident injury when you speak to her, when she speaks, it's clearly cerebral palsy. And she said, and after that car accident, she's married. Barb's married to her sister's husband. Well, that part is true because that's who I'm. Clausman was my sister's husband. I married him after she died. <laughs> and she said, yes. He married, he divorced that sister after that accident and married Barb. And now he brings them both to church. Okay, there were bits and pieces of truth in there, but there were whole big chunks that, that were missed <laughs> entirely. <laughs> oh, bless her heart. Yeah, bless her, bless her little heart. She didn't really have all of her ducks in a row. And I said to the girl telling me the story, who has assured me that she won't tell me who, who said it, I said, oh, you don't have to. I said, I'll know on Sunday exactly who it is. And she said, well, how will you know? And I said, because she's going to be the, the person who is the nicest to me of everybody on Sunday morning and she's going to speak to me where she has never spoken to me before and I was exactly correct <laughs> it's exactly what happened and so I asked my friend I said well did you uh, did you correct the information and she said oh I sure did and I said well good I appreciate that and so I told Lucy this. I told Lucy this whole thing. We laughed, and, and her cerebral palsy made her emotions 
very, very, very close to the surface. And there was not much difference, and there was no difference in the way it sounded. Um, there was very little difference between tears and and laughter for her. They sound and they sounded exactly the same. And I, the only way I would know the difference is because based on conversation and whether she had tears in her eyes. And I uh, I was telling her about it. And I thought she was going to fall out of her wheelchair. She laughed so hard. And, um, I mean, she laughed. She laughed and she laughed. She laughed so hard. And so after that, she referred to Claus Man ever after that as our husband. And, um, yeah, we, we got a lot of mileage out of that. It was pretty funny. But boy, rather than people just ask you for clarification, they jump to their own conclusions. I know. Yep. Now he brings them both to church. <laughs> I tell you what. There are some interesting people in the world. Yep. Okay, so... Um, I'm just going to finish filling this in. And I can always adjust this because right now it's just at the pencil stage. And so I can always adjust this when I'm inking it. Okay, that was a little excessive. All right, so we have that, and then I need to do something inside this um, inside this paisley. I'm just going to look for some inspiration here. So let's see. Let's do. We'll go this direction. So anyway, um, the reason for this design. After we ate at this nice steakhouse in the Mirage Hotel, which was very busy because it was Friday night. And it was a it was really a nice dinner. Wonderful food, good service. Really good service. Um Got acquainted with a couple of, of the wait staff that were very interesting guys. And, okay, I gotta think here for a minute. Um, and, the Studley Duck's son and daughter-in-law had gotten tickets for us to go see the Beatles Love Production, Love Production by Cirque du Soleil. Now, I've never been to a Cirque du Soleil production and I was so excited about it. I just thought this is going to be one of the highlights of my life, probably because I have seen it enough on TV that I kind of understood, you know, the whole acrobatic nature. I couldn't quite imagine what it was going to be like as far as, because it was a Beatles production, and I'm kind of like, I don't know quite what this is going to be like, but, you know, it'll be really interesting. And so... It was fascinating. Okay, I'm just looking at this here for a second. Just a minute. I'm just kind of looking. Are you guys all still here? I hope. <laughs> I hope you're still here. I hope you're still here. Let me know if you are. If you're just listening. Okay, there I see the chat moving. 
when the chat doesn't move, all of a sudden it's so easy to get insecure that something has gone afoul and disconnected. So, okay. Anyway, so based on the fact that the... Um, the Beatles, you know, 60s and 70s, the whole production was a lot of the these kinds of patterns, the colors of, of the 60s, a lot of color blocking, a lot of paisleys, and, and they started with the beginning of the Beatles and then went you know, went right through to, I, I don't know if it was their last song that they did as a group. I don't really know because I knew the Beatles, but I didn't, you know, I didn't buy their music and that kind of stuff. That was, I was into classical music back then because that's what I was doing. Um, I was studying piano, so, you know, I was in classical music and stuff, right? Okay, so... Hello, Orange. Good. Okay, so anyway, um, I'll finish this little section here, then we'll ink a little bit of, the, of this. Okay, now I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the Studley Duck some grief here, and he deserves it, by the way. <laughs> he um, he doesn't hear super acutely well okay he doesn't wear hearing aids which he probably should but he doesn't want to wear hearing aids so there you go you know that's that's pretty typical of people who need them <laughs> that they don't want to wear them i see them absolutely no different than me wearing glasses but anyway there's there's a thing there you know anyway you guys are going to absolutely um, you're you're gonna find this I think you'll find this as humorous as I did I think he also he is a brilliant um, he is brilliant in his field <laughs> he is really he is really really good at what he does and he's still working okay but he's not necessarily real up on pop culture sorts of things. <laughs> oh, really, Angela? That's funny. <laughs> <clears throat> Anne says the Beatles were a huge part of her musical life from the age of 12 to 21. Yeah, and, you know, I their music was always on at dances and stuff, and there were... You know, it was a big controversy of whether you were a Rolling Stones fan or a Beatles fan when I was in school and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I wasn't, I, I enjoyed their music, but I wasn't a big, you know, it wasn't like my life revolved around what the Beatles did, where some of my friends were like that, you know. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. I, so a lot of the music that they played, of course, I remembered, and the productions that they did, I mean, it was phenomenal. I mean, things would come up out of the floor, and things come down from the ceiling, and, you know, it was, it, it really was, it, it was just one of those things that was phenomenal. They would have curtains that uh, that would section off parts of the production floor, and there would be... Um, things projected on these curtains, although the curtains were um, uh, translucent, and so you could see through them. I don't, I, there's a lot of it. I don't have any idea how they did what they did, but it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, you could, I think you could see that production 10 times, and you would see different things every time. Not that the production was different, but just because it's such sensory overload, and the colors are you know, so colorful. So the costuming was remarkable, and and each song told a story to some degree. There were lots of um, VW Beetle cars, <clears throat> and there was a VW bus 
that came into the, I mean, but like I said, things would come up out of the floor, different shapes would rise up out of the floor um, because it would open in different, I mean, it was, but it was just seamless. Like, you know, a big thing would rise up out of the floor and they would do this number, of, you know, like there were, um, uh, there were people on rollerblades and there were trampolines and, you know, there were people on the trampolines that were bouncing off the trampolines and landing on top of the cars and you know, I'm like, Ugh. but one of my favorite things with one of the cars was a VW Bug and it came out on the stage and then, it, I mean, it looked like the VW car, you know, the Beetle, the Bug. And then all of a sudden it broke apart and all all of the people that were crammed inside this car each have a part of the car. So it just, it all, it was like it exploded. I think that is one of the coolest things I think I've seen. So it didn't actually explode, but you know what I mean. Anyway, it was, it was fascinating to just see the whole thing. It was just sensory overload. So I thought, I'm just going to, you know, sort of do that whole concept and I'll show you um, I'll show you the pictures at the end of it. Um, this is the very last scene, and you'll get you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about. So this is the closing scene, and I nicely got the guy in front of me. But see all the colors. Now the colors are not reproducing accurately here. They're more. There's a lot more pink. Uh, this is showing a lot of orange, and there was orange, but like this pink was a really brilliant pink. But look the lights on the floor. These are those curtains I was talking about. This kind of thing that are just. I don't know how they did that. I don't know how they did that. But it was amazing. And then I think. Here's here's another um, another shot of that end, so you can see even more of it. You can see some of the costuming here, um, all these different costumes, you know. But there was all of these acrobatic things that were happening, and you know, people on ropes and doing these amazing trip tricks and all this kind of stuff but there's all this patterning and st inspirational stuff anyway that's the reason for this that's why I'm doing what I'm doing because I thought oh I think this will be a very cool thing to do um orange is a great color it is definitely it was really neat it was really neat anyway so we're talking about <laughs> Okay, it's, uh, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the phrase Cirque du Soleil, right? Um, they have different productions. Many of them, uh, I think most of them, I don't know if all of them, but many of them are in Las Vegas, if not all of them. But there's Ka and O and uh, I can't even tell you the rest of them. Michael Jackson um, is a Cirque du Soleil. They have a production with his music. Um, I don't know all the different ones, but there's a bunch of them, right? So when the whole thing is over, bless his heart. <laughs> um, what Studley Duck heard was not Cirque du Soleil, and he was not familiar with Cirque du Soleil. You know, that's not his field of of work and and you know and he said now how, what is that again circus filet okay circus filet is what he thought we were saying not cirque de soleil <laughs> I know you guys, I knew you guys were going to get, I knew, I have that, I, I'm going to, I have that in my, um, 
I wrote about that quite a bit in my journal because I laughed until I was on the floor. And then it was a matter of trying to get him to understand what Cirque de Soleil, how did you spell it? How did you say it? And, and he said, well, it was a lot like a circus. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> it was. <laughs> yes. Um, and so all together now we say, bless his heart. <laughs> he decided afterward that he wasn't going to be able to remember Cirque du Soleil. And so he was just going to call it Circus Filet. But at least he knew it wasn't right. But he could remember that. And he said, well, it was a lot like a circus. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it was a lot like a circus. Kind of what it's based around. <laughs> if you guys, if you guys don't laugh at that, I'm telling you, if you guys don't laugh at that, there's no hope for you. There's just no hope if you don't see the humor in that. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I mean, I I can't even tell you how hard I laughed at that. I cannot even tell you how hard. And his daughter-in-law and I um yeah, we laughed a lot at that. Circus fillet. Yep. <laughs> Oh yes, he did. Uh huh. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if we can put one more. I'm just gonna make another. Oh, I tell you what, I don't know if I got what it takes to educate this man or not. He is such a kind-hearted, and he is such a smart person. And I'll tell you what I said to him. I said, you're the one that graduated from the university with a master's degree, and you're whatever it is in law, you know, whatever, you, whatever degree that is. And I said... I don't ever want I don't ever want to hear anything about my level of education versus yours ever. And he never has, but he said never. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not his it's not his forte. That's okay, it's not his fault. Anyway, it sure did make us laugh. Oh, goodness, it made us laugh. Um, so it's good. It's good to laugh that hard, you know? It's good to laugh that hard. Oh, goodness. I, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. All right, let's see. What do we want to do? Let's put a little... But all once I finally got control of myself, all I could think of was bless his heart. Circus fillet. <laughs> you'll never you'll never forget that either, will you? Mm -mm. You guys will never forget that either. And you're welcome. That'll probably be an earworm for you from now on. All right. So I'm just filling space here <laughs> while I'm while I'm remembering circus fillet. He said he got kind of stuck in that, and he said, "Is that because it's kind of circus-like? Is that why they call it that?" And I'm like. Yes, darling. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> oh. Can 
goodbye. Good night, Dorothy. <laughs> he had to come into the chat to defend himself, I see. <laughs> He's here trying to defend himself. There are there is no defense, by the way. There is no defense for this. <laughs> you guys give him some grief. Bless his heart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Rhonda. <laughs> anyway, that's where this came from. Inspired totally by the circus fillet. Circus of the Sun. <laughs> so he was close. Oh, don't encourage him, Evelyn. Don't encourage him. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to just work down here where I started. Okay, <laughs> you all give him, you all give him some grief, okay? It's good for him. It's good for him. I figured I'd flesh him out by giving him a bunch of grief. I did, and there he is. But it was such a, uh, an amazing sensory overload kind of situation that I thought, no, I'm going to have to do something with this. And so I am. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to work on inking this for now because I'm sure he's going to give me a bunch of grief. Um, and then possibly it depends on um, what I get done between now and Friday. Maybe I'll get a, the bulk of it with color added to it. And um, we'll see because my intention is to, like I said, to cut it up and make, uh, I don't think I told you, I was going to make cards out of it. It is nice to have lots of cards on hand. If you don't make your own cards, it's a good idea to do that. And so once I've got the pencil drawing, which it didn't have to have quite as much detail in the pencil part of this, but you know, once you get started and it kind of takes on a life of its own, um, it really is fun to just take a style like this, which is totally different than like Zentangle, and yet it does kind of share a few things in common with Zentangle, where Zentangle is one pattern repeated, um, expounded upon and repeated, um, typically. This is a little bit different than that. Anyway, so that's kind of, that's where this came from. <laughs> where the inspiration came from, from the old, the good old circus filet. Yep. <laughs> I sure did laugh a lot that night. I haven't laughed that hard in a, really, I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. I needed that. So, um, Studley Duck, thank you for providing <laughs> all the illness did leave. That is true. That is true. So, as, as I get this inked, then I will come back with a white eraser. Um, which is, I'll use one of these because otherwise the, this is also a white plastic eraser, but this will take forever and this will do the job real fast. And I will take all the pencils, pencil line, all the graphite out. 
it is quite mandala-like in a lot of ways, except for the fact that it's just, you know, it's a conglomeration of patterns as opposed to growing the design from the center out, but it is does have a lot of things in common with it. Hello, Sylvia. Circus filet, circus souffle. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Terry. <laughs> Terry says she loves how her husband sings words to songs that no one could have ever imagined. His hearing is fine. He is filled in the blanks with his own words. Well, when my husband, uh, Claus Man, was he went to a very very conservative church, and one of my favorite things is one day. Um, after church, he was a little boy, and after church, he asked his mother why they were singing about cross-eyed bears in church. And she's like, what are you talking about? She thought he was being, you know, because it was a very, very, it was the right church. It was the holy church. <laughs> and she didn't know what in the world he was talking about. And... Um, the song was the consecrated cross isle bear and he heard it as a little boy as the constipated cross-eyed bear and he couldn't quite figure out why they were singing about constipated cross-eyed bears in church <laughs> i know right uh, ah yes i know oh my goodness oh my goodness Studley Duck. Studley Duck. Well, I knew I'd flush him out. If if he was if he had the ability to chat, I figured I would flush him right to the surface, and that is what we did. <laughs> uh-huh. So what I have going on over here is I have a scratch paper and this is a jelly roll pen <clears throat> that I'm using. I may do uh, some of this I may do with the the um, heavier black line. I don't know, just for grins and giggles. Oh no, bless his heart. Uh, I, you know, yeah. Bless his heart, number two. Constipated cross-eyed bear. I can just hear him, you know, as a little boy. Same, but why do they sing about constipated cross-eyed bears? Why are they singing about cross-eyed bears in church? <laughs> I can just hear him asking that. Regularly, Claus Man would make, I mean, he would make things up. And he really, he would, in an effort not to come across as... Uh, That he didn't want to ask people to repeat all the time, so he would just make it up. And sometimes he would respond to me. And he also, at this point, when he started this, he was he was going down the dementia path, but I didn't know it. I didn't recognize it. And sometimes he would answer me with some ridiculous answer and I'd say what are you talking about and he'd say well that's what you said and I'm like no I didn't say that it's like why would you think I would say that well I wondered why you would say that <laughs> it's like did it occur to you to just ask for clarification yeah but he didn't he didn't want to ask me to repeat because <laughs> he knew he knew that that was frustrating sometimes But he would come up with some doozies once in a while. Ugh. Yeah. Sometimes when you... Sometimes you'll get a thick spot in the ink because your pen slips or, you know, it just is what it is. You just got to be okay with it. It's a hand-drawn thing. Uh, the other thing when you're working with the jelly roll pens or even a paint pen is don't go too fast. You have to give the pen time to let the ink out. Uh, 
if you try and go too fast, you are just asking for it to skip and cause all kinds of problems. So from, from now on, when I mention Circus Filet, you guys will know, those of you that were here, it will be our little um, inside joke. Okay, Circus Filet. Yep. Mm-hmm. And a thing that's, one of the things that's nice about doing a drawing like this is that when something might be needing to dry a little bit, you've got someplace else to move your, to move around to a different spot and um, just keep working. Circus filet. <laughs> Bless his heart. Circus filets and constipated cross-eyed bears. I tell you, the men in my life I don't know. I don't know. They do, and they have, and hopefully they will continue to make me smile. Well, when when my son was little, he had a, a pretty good one, too. Um, there was this thing... Oh, well, that's that's a real $64,000 question, Terry. They la once you open them and start using them, their shelf life, they start counting down and they're going to stop at some point. They're just going to stop because that's what they do. They stop working and they will stop working at different it just depends. If you recap them totally very tightly and you store them horizontally, I find that I have better luck with them. Um, you're going to have the best luck if you just keep using them. But oftentimes they will stop working. But I find this with a lot of other pens too. They will stop working when there's still a lot of ink in the barrel. So, you know, the best thing is to just once you open the pen, use it and keep using it. Exactly, and <laughs> so true. <laughs> when my son was little, I don't know how old he was, but he was fairly small. He's big enough to read, but not necessarily big enough to read real well. And we, he would frequently go to the grocery store with me because we lived out of town. Um, well, out of town as in like 10 miles from the grocery store. And so he would frequently go with me to the grocery store. If he's watching, he'll come into the chat to defend himself on this one, too. <laughs> and you know how kids do when you check out? There's all this stuff to look at, you know, on the because they want you to buy more stuff, right? And so we're walking out. And here with, he says, I mean, I'm trying to watch the cash register, make sure they're checking me out right, that the prices are right and everything, you know, the whole thing. I'm paying attention, in other words. I'm not paying so much attention to him. He was old enough to occupy himself but not get in trouble. And he says, Mommy, 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 Mommy. And I said, finally, you know, exasperation. I said, what? And he goes, what's a water dwang? <laughs> oh, what? A water dwang? Well, they had, <laughs> so it's like all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I got to figure out what, what's going on with this, a water dwang. What in the world? What in the world? He was, he had some learning gaps when it came to math and reading, which was one of the reasons a little bit later I pulled him out of school so that we could fill in, I could work with him on those things at his pace and there's a whole long story behind that. We homeschooled for three years and then he went back to school. Anyway, um, this was when he was younger than that. 
younger than homeschooling. Fortunately, <laughs> water dwang. What's a water dwang? And there were water balloons that were by the cash register, but they were the car, sort of more permanent version of water balloons, I guess, or something. Anyway, they were they were labeled, branded water dogs, D A W G S, water dogs. But to him, in his young mind, he read it as water dwang. <laughs> Hello, Angie. <laughs> water dwang <laughs> like I said if he's watching he will defend he will pop in and defend himself oh goodness yeah oh the things people hear and say yep and lest I uh, lest I come across as having all the answers. That is not correct. I am far from that. But oh goodness. The men in my life have certainly given me a lot to laugh about. So what you said, so I don't know, Terry, if that answered your question about the jelly roll pins. Um, the biggest thing I can tell you is once you crack one, and the same thing with a glaze pen, which is also by Sakura. If you take that little rubber tip off the bottom of the pen and you start using it, uh, use it. Because if you don't, you're not going to be happy because it's going to start. It, it's like it starts a countdown. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to make your life miserable before long because I'm going to stop working. Yep. So go for it. Use them. Enjoy it. And when they stop, just don't worry about it. Just get another pen. Save yourself the aggravation. Keep extras on hand uh, so that you have them at your disposal. And you always have a fresh one that you can grab. Um, that's why I buy them the black ones. That's I mean, there's an errant gold pen in here at the moment. But that's why I buy them like this. So it's a whole bunch of black jelly roll pins so I always have one at the ready and once in a while I buy them in a box of 12 depending if I'm teaching a class um, I'll have a box of 12 on hand so I have them yeah water dwings circus fillets and cross-eyed bears I bet you're glad you came tonight. <coughs> Where else <coughs> on the World Wide Web can you be so well educated as you are here tonight? I mean, really. I do use a lot of the same motifs. I found myself uh, repeating a lot of the same motifs that I do use in the mandala embellishments as I used in a lot of these patterns. And that was a, kind of a fun discovery. All right, so let's go over here. The other thing that helps is if you clean off the pin point, you know, just scratch it off on a piece of plain paper and recap it before you, um, you know, if you're going to set it down, then do that. That seems to help if you keep the crud off of the tip.
Hello, Kim. <laughs> you had to wait. You had to wait a few minutes. Yep. I have it. We have it set that way on purpose because we were at one point having a terrible time with the bots that were spamming everybody's channel. And so we ended up, we found that that, a bunch of us found that that was a way that we could kind of help control some of the issues with the bots by setting it to um, the subscriber mode. And so that's why. But you only have to do that once. You only have to do it once. Now, when you're doing this, the one thing that you want to do is not put a lot of pressure on the eraser when you're doing this. So, you know, erase as lightly as you, as you can. Because it will try to take some of the ink off. So if it does that, you may have to come back and... Um, you know, darken up some of the of the lines. But hopefully you can see the difference from this, which is now cleaned up, to this, which has the graphite around it. It looks messy. So hopefully you can see the difference in that. So once it's cleaned up, you know, it's inked and erased. It makes a big, it makes a big difference in, um, in what it looks like. So that's what my goal is going to be, is to ink that. I probably will ink it tonight. And then if I get super, um, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> You don't subscribe, subscribe to just anybody. Well, we're glad you subscribed here, Kim. Uh, then I may do the same thing or something similar on this one. Just so it would be, you know, I'd have two of them. A cool version and a warm version. And that would be fun. And then it'll be fun to see. I think what I'm going to do is... Um, I don't know this, but... What I may try is once I scan the, the ink work in, um, then I may, so I've got it already in the computer, I may take this one before if I can do, if I can just make myself do this, don't put any color on it, which is typically what I want to do is I want to see what it's going to look like. So I start doing something and then I'm like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done that, you know. So if I can make myself not put any ink on it or color on it, because I am going to color on top of this um, with the colors from the 60s, pink, yellow, orange, aqua, lime green, those kinds of colors. Uh, take it to an office supply place, which is close here, and have them print it on cardstock. So, and then I'm going to try coloring on that with the markers because mostly the kinds of markers I'll show you what I have in mind as far as markers go that would be handy information for you I have different kinds of um, highlighters I also have um, pip squeaks from Crayola I bought these today I have not used them yet um, I bought these last night. have not used these either. These are the Sharpie Creative Markers. This is the bullet tip. They also have a brush point. I may go back and get the brush point um, as well. But this has got some really nice colors. And I've not used these. I've watched some videos on them just to see. And this thing, they have a QR code that you can scan. That is a weird, that is a weird deal. I wouldn't even bother with that. Uh, they do have a nice, the white seems to be a pretty nice, pretty nice marker. You can get the white and the black, at least at Walmart, in a uh, two-pack with the white and the black. So, anyway, so I have those. And then, you know, for little tiny things, of course, I have colored pencils and stuff like that. But um, I have, I have, uh, also, I have Tombow markers and I don't know what else I have. So I have a variety of things that will work. And I may use them all just to see which ones I like. I don't know. I haven't decided. 
Hello, Starla. You really like the, the Sharpie brush tips. I have the first ones that they came out with. I have the first set of brush tip pens um, because they'll mark over um, acrylic paint. The brush tips will mark over acrylic paint without clogging up. If you mark over acrylic paint with, you know, with one of these, the ultra fine tip or the fine point, these are fine point, and then there's the ultra fine point. If you try to go over, uh, like this is the ultra fine. If you try to go over acrylic paint, like in your journals, uh, art journals and stuff with that, that uh, it'll kill your pens. But if you use the brush tip in the Sharpies, the, this is from the old set that I have, that it won't do that, it won't kill the pen. Anyway, so I'm anxious to see how the rest of these work. Anyway, we'll see. And then I also have the paint pens, the Artistro multi-surface paint pens. So I have a number of different ones that I'll see. And then if worse comes to worse, I'll use these things. Although I bought them specifically for the patterns on the outside. <laughs> and the color. Color inspiration. There you go. Um, Barb, see link above for the pen. Um, what pen was that? Great mixed media pen. Oh, oh, okay. Works in wet media without ruining. Oh, cool. Uh, what is the, what's the brand? Bought some instantly smear proof micro pens from Timu. They're fantastic and waterproof. Oh, that's good information. Hello, Dana. What's the, what's the brand name for that pen, Rhonda? Do you know? <sighs> Dana, it's good to see you. Haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're doing well. I am glad you guys are here. Thank you for coming. Pilot G Tech C4. I'll write that down. Pilot G Tech C4. Did you get them on Amazon? Okay, I got it. Did okay, yeah. Well, that's good. Amazon, Amazon can frustrate you, but it also is a great source of things to be able to to get at usually a fairly reasonable price. Not always, but usually. Twelve dollars for six. That is excellent price, by the way. Excellent, excellent. Oh, you stream Mondays too? Oh, I didn't realize that. All right. You know what? I'm going to let you go because I'm going to go watch the NCAA finals, men's finals. I watched the women's finals yesterday. I'm going to watch the men and have a bite to eat and just relax a little bit. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you being here. Athena Ducky, hello. Um, oh, I'm going to cut it up. And make cards out of it. That's what I'm going to do. And cut it up. So this is all for the purpose of cutting it up. Thank you guys. It's good to have you here. Hopefully you had a smile or two. Um, at the expense of others. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll have to go back and listen. Um, and I did not get married while in Las Vegas at the Elvis Wedding Chapel. So any rumors to that effect are incorrect. Uh, remember to check out Olive Crest if you want to, if you feel led to help support families and children. It's a worthwhile, a, I think it's a very worthwhile nonprofit to help support. Um, for families and children to help keep them together. They act as a stopgap between the state and, you know, getting kids taken away from families and stuff. They, they do really, they do good work. Anyway, with that being said, I will be back Friday. Uh, Saturday is the VIP class. I will get an email out to you about that. 
um, Friday I'll be back at 2 p.m. Eastern and uh, until then we'll finish probably finish doing something with this on on Friday that's my goal we'll see if that happens you know sometimes the muse changes my mind <laughs> I know darn it Elvis wedding is just classy I know right I know <laughs> hello Sharon <laughs> okay I'm going to go. Thanks for being here. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I will see you before you know it. Bye for now.